Catastrophic Childhood Case Studies, Law Enforcement, and The Mirage of Mind Control to Create a New World Order. The Catastrophic Childhood Case Studies category page is up and running now. You can find it on my Table of Contents page or on the Categories menu on my blog pages. I have assembled close to 20 compendiums so far. Each of the compendiums describes a certain type of soul wounding, a certain strand of misqualified energy circulating in Earth's newosphere. This misqualified energy is coming to the attention of light workers right now because it is clearing from the newosphere as round three, solar cycle 25, of the ascension process here on Earth. The introductions on the compendium blogs are red hot news flashes. Beneath the introductions are related blog pages for those who have the time and inclination for in-depth analysis. I feel these case studies will be of interest to theologians, psychiatrists, and psychologists. There are issues to do with law enforcement in these case studies and their linked to pages. But the criminal issues are addressed from a general standpoint, not a specific standpoint. In the event specifics are known about criminal issues, I feel, the right approach is through our local law enforcement agencies, and very surely not via online media. That is my take on the issue of criminal energy threads in the newosphere. It is clear that law enforcement can do only so much by way of crime prevention and apprehension of criminals. That is because the deepest depravity, which gives rise to the crime families, the mind control cults, the cults that kill, the mafias that inflict such damage on human society, is overlit by demon overlords, the big bads and fallen angels, maybe even Satan himself. It is only the conquest of these demon overlords that will result in the idyllic society. We must treat our law enforcement officers, I feel, with the utmost compassion. They themselves cannot overcome the demon realm. On third dimensional and fourth dimensional earth, only the angelic realm is equipped for that kind of spiritual warfare. Surely we can ask our law enforcement officers for help should a crime be committed. That is their job in our communities, and they do it very well indeed. But the true antidote to the ills of the world, I feel, lies in our prayerful invocation of the help that may be ours through the members of the angelic realm and through earnest supplication before the throne of God himself. Surely we cannot lay that burden at the threshold of our local law enforcement precincts. The criminal issues I discuss in these case studies are among the darkest and most dense of neospheric threads on earth to do with such topics as angel of death, surgical experiments akin to those of Joseph Mengel, child trafficking and child sexual abuse, sadomasochism, torture and lust murder justified by whatever poor example of ratiocination and other criminal paraphilic behaviors, perversion of faith in God through the practice of Satanism 
and through worship of the black sacraments. Serial killing of women to fatten the purse of an institution deemed to be sacred, or their enslavement through mind control in service to misogynist spiritual adepts. Group Black Tantra by men of various religions. Enslavement of the ego of spiritual, celibate, or homosexual men to the black magic machinations of the demon realm and their consequent demonic possession. And the demonic enchainment of employees and followers of obsessed spiritual, celibate, or homosexual men which results in their acting out the crimes doted on by the demon owners of those possessed. In the early 2000s, I wondered why these issues should so frequently be brought before me on the psychic plane. Through subsequent research on the topic, I discovered that the identical dense dark energy threads have come up time and again in the writings of other psychics and spiritual people. They, like I, have endured the stages of being appalled at these energies, at wanting to do something for the world to rectify these profound injuries to our souls and to the fabric of our societies, of being willing to take on the controllers, the Illuminati, and the demonic lien holders of the great cities of earth, of giving these trysts their all, their everything. Unlike certain of my predecessor psychics, I am resolved never to fall to psychic self-aggrandizement through plaguing world leaders with mind control attempts under the notion that I, this small, egoic personality may have the solutions to the woes of the world, that I may have the perfect key to invention of the idyllic society, and that I might make the perfect dictator for this new utopia. To fall for this notion would, I strongly aver, be to place our bodies and our souls prostrate before the hooves of the demon world and to beg of them, Tread upon me, you invisible mobsters. Pulverize my heart. Darken my soul. Shred my body. Hijack this precious human lifetime obscuring what is good and pure and true. It is to say, give me but a dram, a tuppence of one uppence in return. Why is it that the desire of a psychic to help build utopia here on earth might meet with such disaster in a personal spiritual sense, the turning from the light to the dark of a theologian such as Charles Leadbeater or Benjamin Purnell or of certain Jesuits and other Catholic clerics or of those present-day spiritual adepts of whom I speak in the catastrophic childhood case studies. The assumption of power in the world, even for the sake of its betterment, I feel, makes a man attractive to the demon realm, very much so. There is nothing demons love more than power over human beings, and no way they can accomplish this more effectively than by subverting a man who decides to seek it out. When a good spiritual man falls to the allure of worldly power and aligns with that, be it for the best of reasons, he will find himself ceaselessly assailed by the dark. 
How easy it is to slip and fall, as in a dream, to these insidious beings. Having so fallen, how may one escape them? After decades of struggle, I, like others of my predecessors, have come to the conclusion that this little I, my personality, my small self, am of no avail in the struggle against evil on earth. To my mind, and perhaps to that of those who came before me on this path, the only way forward as a light worker is to align my will, my heart, and my mind with the great will, the great heart, and the great mind of God. If fight there be, then that fight must be on his mighty shoulders and not on mine.